Welcome to Scotland and round four of Formula Rally. We're just outside Dumfries, in prospect over 60 miles and six stages of rallying and some intriguing head-to-heads. None more so than the battle at the top between Martin Rowe in the Puma, winner of rounds one and two, and Justin Dale in the Works Peugeot, who after his round three victory in the Welsh Rally was going into the Kumho Tyres Scottish Rally just four championship points behind Rowe. Yeah, it was great. Um, just what we wanted and what we needed for the Peugeot team. Um, two second places early in the year and to win that one, it's great. In Wales, Dale tamed the tarmac. Rose struggled. But whilst Dale won, from a championship perspective, it could have been better. Looking at it at midday when sort of we were in the lead and Martin was sort of fifth or sixth, it was, it was looking good for the championship. But no, everyone's got to get to the end and there was cars there that yeah, I really needed to be in between us. But if we can win this one, uh, even if Martin's second on this one again, it takes us level for the championship. So that's our plan. But Peugeot weren't the only team with that plan. Martin Rowe had found round three difficult. Things were just not going his way. Left nine. Okay, bit scary. We were struggling on that day, to be honest. Um, we weren't that competitive, and we were lucky to come away with a second place. But now we're in the forest, things will change. We've got an 18-mile stage straight away, and then relatively short stages after that. So we have to come out of that first stage fastest. Keep off the curves, Matt. That was the warning to Proton Works driver Matt Sanderson from co-driver Claire Mole in round three. They were heading for the podium in Wales, but it was a curve right at the end of the day that stopped their car and their chances. The car is keeping good on tarmac now as well. There's nothing wrong with it on tarmac, and it's now it's, we know it's good on gravel, so it should be a good event for us. So we're a bit behind in the championship, so it's just to get out and win it every round that's left. So we're going to try very hard. The Works Polo has had its moments this year, but driver Neil Simpson was off games. Unfortunately, um, I'm not going to be doing the rally this weekend. As you can see, I've broken my arm. Um, we were testing the Volkswagen Polo on Monday up here in Scotland. And unfortunately, we had a component failure um, on, the, on the front suspension of the car, which ultimately um, meant that I lost the steering. Uh, and the car went into the trees at about 100 miles an hour. So uh, I was quite lucky, really, just to get away with this as an injury. With Simpson on the bench, VW put David Higgins behind the wheel, a man with quite a CV north of the border, but he does not always enjoy Scotland. Left two plus long. Oh. I don't believe it. It was a fantastic opportunity for me, although it's um, not under the ideal circumstances, like nobody wants to get a drive because somebody else has injured themselves, but for me it's a great opportunity to, to get back out for some rallies this year and we haven't had any time in the car, so we've had to learn the car this rally and see how we do and go from there really. Paul Wedgbury was quick in Wales before he joined the casualty list. He's fighting it out in the privateers with Simon Major, swapping Puma for Proton here, and Martin Sansom in the Persia. Pre-start in Scotland, pressure everywhere. We've got to win this rally. There's no options there. We have to win this rally. Stage one was always going to be hugely influential on the shape of this event. Out of the blocks and straight into 19 miles of rallying. The five remaining stages would cover around 40 miles. Martin Rowe was pushing hard. Winning here was his only interest. But his determination nearly took him off the track. He escaped. Slick reaction saving him. But a reminder, perhaps, to finish first First, you have to finish. As Rowe headed down into the thick of the forest, his car sounded in trouble. Over-revving badly. And as the Ford Works team headed for one of the fastest parts of the stage, a number in the dashboard confirmed there was a problem. Rowe was in second gear, forced there by an engine that was revving out of control. Change up, and the car could be impossible to keep on the track. It was a case of trying to keep the car on the stage. Rose struggled to steer, on the very edge of control. And in front of the crowds, and ahead of the hairpin, Rowe was forced to stop. If he could find a solution, then he may reflect on this as a stage one hiccup. But if he failed, his Scottish rally chances would be over. We've become accustomed to Justin Dale's Peugeot pace. And with co-driver Andrew Bargery calling the shots, stage one was going well for this team. Right seven. And left four, 80. Right four, and left three, long through dip. And left two, 80, turn F in left through gate.
Dale approached the hairpin. 50. Rowe was still stationary, still out of the car. It distracted Dale. Right two at the crest. Hand signals and a co-driver chuckle indicated the potential significance. In the works polo, David Higgins may be used to Scotland, but the car and the co-driver, Michael Gibson, were new. Higgins, though, was enjoying it. As he passed the crowds, Martin Rowe was still stationary. BW were on the pace, but Rowe had already lost two minutes. Left five plus. Left five plus. Then right six. This was the car that had a 100 mile an hour smash earlier in the week. VW Motorsport, though, had delivered it to Dumfries, wrapped and in mint condition, just eight hours before the start. Life, though, was not so sweet for Martin Rowe. But it was time to give it a go. Problem solved or time to limp home, as vital seconds slipped away and more cars flew vulture-like towards the injured Puma. In the works, Proton, Matt Anderson, had been longing for some rallying in the forest. These sort of conditions can be found in his backyard at home in Sweden. And as the Proton approached the hairpin, there was no sign of movement from the championship leader. Was Rowe out of this game after just one stage? Matt Anderson and Claire Mole were delivering an impressive drive. Only Justin Dale delivered a quicker opening stage. Martin Rowe had been parked for nearly four minutes on a section that he had acknowledged would be so pivotal in determining the overall points. And as he eventually set off, surely a point scoring recovery would only be possible if this event chewed through cars and Rowe is given a fast track up the leaderboard by default. Justin Dale had no control over that, but he was shaping his own destiny. The Peugeot team looked fast, and they were fast. No one could touch them on the first stage. They did more than just win the opening stage. They earned themselves a 32-second cushion. Pretty disastrous first stage, really. Um, I don't know, about three miles in, we had a, a problems downshifting. The car wouldn't change down the box, and then we had a bit of an off. Um, and then about a mile later on, we found the throttle was stuck wide open, and this is why I couldn't change down the gears. And um, basically, we were running out of brakes. It was on full power all the time. It was getting a bit hairy. I was having to slow the car down on the brakes, and then just dip the clutch on the hairpins. It was just revving on the limiter. So we were running out of brakes, so we thought we'd best try and fix it. So got it so it was stuck at sort of half throttle. And then got through to the end, but we dropped three minutes. So I don't know what they'll do, but they'll change everything they possibly can to fix it. It was uncharacteristically intense amongst the Ford Works team, but the solution was simple. Rowe was out of the wood and into the trees, but he had a mountain to climb. With Justin Dale a league apart from any other player, Rowe and Wood knew they'd be looking for others to trip up. But Rowe, out of trouble, was not delivering his usual pace. After losing four minutes, ten seconds on the opening stage, he finished fourth on the second stage, but around 15 seconds behind Justin Dale. On Twiglies, stage three, he had to deliver. But to do that, the hardware needed to be in perfect shape. And the noise from Rowe's engine suggested problems. Too much power on stage one, but two stages later, all power was evaporating. There was every prospect now that by the end of this day, Rowe would no longer be championship leader. Um, <laughs> then we stopped. Uh, hang on. What stage was it? Stage three, the next stage. Well, we've only done two then. No, that's, yeah, feels stage, like a long day, hasn't it? Stage three, um, probably a mile into the stage, we lost all the power from the engine. So uh, got out, had a look. Everything seemed OK. There's no liquids leaking. So tried to continue, but there's just no power from the car. 
so the prospects are sitting there waiting for the tow back. No, I wasn't too keen on that, and I said I was trying to encourage Martin just to just to see if it would go a bit further, and he fired it up a couple of times, and and it would move, but as soon as it came to a slope, it wouldn't go up the slope. So I resigned myself to spending the rest of the day in there. Modern cars are complex things, you know. You never really know until somebody comes along with a laptop and tells you what really what went on. So the man with the laptop's just disappeared for the time being. <laughs> they were good at keeping up appearances, but this was a bitter blow for Rowan Wood and for Ford. Yet whilst they were the highest profile casualties, they were not the only ones. Things had started well for Ian Barrett in his Proton, seventh after the first stage. His day and his engine stopped 500 metres before the end of stage three, and his rally was over. Paul Alexander had a stage one puncher, but kept going. He finished sixth on that stage, but it was the only stage he finished. Fords have been revelling in Formula Rally, but in the early stages in Scotland, the pressure was really falling on one man's shoulders. A Frenchman, new to the Scottish forests, works driver Patrick Mago. In the first stage, Mago burnt brakes and time, and then he got into his stride. After three stages, Mago was lying fifth, but looking increasingly comfortable. At the halfway mark, though, there were two Peugeots in front of him. Dale was almost out of sight, but Martin Sansom and Phil Wells were just one place ahead, fourth after three stages. But whilst Mago was getting into the groove, Sansom had engine problems and occasional pilot error. Paul Wedgbury was flying in the punchy-looking Saxo, sixth after three stages. Not quite the blistering start he made in Wales, but a good drive. He kept out of trouble, and Sansom, the only privateer ahead of him. By now, there were only two Super 1600 Pumas still out on the stages. Robert Woodside and Dean Beckett had lost five minutes on the opening stage when they stopped to change a puncher. Yet with so many retirements, they needed just two more cars ahead of them to fail to finish, and they would be in the points. Not everyone, though, was relying on others to fail. Justin Dale had won each of the first three stages and had won them convincingly. If the Peugeot pair could keep doing this, then they would leave Scotland as Formula Rally Championship leaders. Dale was now first onto each stage, and that was adding pressure. 150. I think a small disadvantage running first on the road now because uh, it is really smooth and greasy on the top and some of it's actually grass so uh, that last stage was a bit interesting at times because we didn't actually know anyone else's times until the end of stage two so we're still pushing as hard as we could through both of them so yeah it's looking good we just got to keep that going now. So Dale and Peugeot on a roll Sorry? and a fast trouble free start. Ford looking for answers. Martin Rowe looking despondent. Half the team's day was over. So we talked of all the head-to-heads, -head, didn't we, at the beginning of this rally. Already Simon Major out, Martin Rowe out, Justin Dale, he's just cleaned his car. Things are going pretty well for Peugeot. See you after the break. In the works Puma, Patrick Mago looked keen to leave that laptop and get back on the hills. With two to go, he was eyeing a podium position for round four of Formula Rally, but he had to attack if he was going to get one. Mats Anderson in the works Proton was second with two to go, but seemed a little concerned. The first long stage uh, was fun, we were just able to pull fifth twice and we should be able to pull it out more, I think. It's like something is going very heavily. I mean, it's not much, but it's a little, little edge at the top we miss at the moment, so, but uh, I think we sort it. We're thinking of changing the ECU here and see if that helps us a bit. It was quiet too in the VW camp. Lying third, with just a third of the rally remaining, there were problems. New driver, but a familiar situation for a team whose car has such potential, but is struggling to deliver. The first day we struggled to get enough brakes to the rear, so I had to keep fiddling with the bias. And unfortunately, it jammed up the cable inside the, the um, bulkhead. So I had to do the whole of the second stage with no brakes for the first half. But then the second half, they kept locking on, so I had to drive with the um, brake on. Then it went out to release, I had to release it manually by hooking my foot under the pedals. It's OK, we've got it here, so we just have to make our way to the 
see what we can do from now on, really. It feels nice apart from this um, braking problem, but once it doesn't feel your confidence where you're going down flat in sixth gear of only the handbraking gears to slow you because you, you're doing the same with both hands, but it's good, so we'll see, just get it fixed here and carry on. Going into the fifth stage, a repeat of the 19-mile first stage, David Higgins and Mike Gibson were less than 20 seconds behind the works Proton. And with Higgins really starting to feel at home, there was every prospect of a real battle. Right three plus, opens, and then tightens, narrows. 20, right five, in over crest. Right five, As they screamed down the gravel, though, there was concern on board. Something felt wrong. Black crest, 70, right six surface. Yeah, we're not far enough in. 30, right four, tightens in. Something was wrong. Watch it. Left eye plus over, bump 40, car breaking crest, immediate left two plus. Watch it here. Yeah. A puncture. In there. They stopped and changed wheels on the stage and were soon back in action. But they had lost time, around three minutes, and they'd slipped to sixth. But the VW team were still in the game, and that was becoming a valuable commodity. One that Robert Woodside and Dean Beckett took into stage five, but not into the final stage. In the one make 1400 Ford Pumas, David Henderson claimed his third win of the season, overhauling Sean Woofenden right at the wire. Another strong performance, having finished third overall in the Welsh Rally. 22-year-old Darren Snape made it five wins in a row and enough to win the Ford KA Championship. It was, though, extremely close at the front of the KA pack. And it was just as tight in the VW Polo Rally Challenge, with Clive Wheeler driving into top slot. A position that Rory Gallagher secured in the Peugeot Super 106 Cup. It was Gallagher's second win this year. No one else has achieved that in this series, and it puts him second overall in this hugely competitive championship. At the top of the Formula Rally leaderboard, rewards were on offer for making it to the finish. Paul Wedgbury and Neil Dashfield did just that. Smooth driving took them to fifth. This team are proving their potential on the circuit. Privateers now, but they are getting noticed. And they deliver an impressive campaign on a very tight budget. Yeah, today's been good. We, um... We had a bad first stage where um, we got the wrong tyres on to start with, uh, which were far too hard. Um, put some different tyres on, went out, and, and then the next the next four stages we've been sort of up there and taking time out of a couple in front of us. So, you know, the times have been really good. Not quite good enough to be first privateer. Martin Samson and Phil Wells one place ahead of the Citroen pair and just one place from the podium. This team peaked on the final stage for their only top three finish, but they eked out an outstanding result on a day where they had to overcome problems. But whilst there were minor mechanical issues on the Peugeot, Patrick Mago's major problem was being new to the Scottish Hills. But halfway through the event, he started to look at home. He took a minute and a half off his first time on the 19-mile stage and finished third overall. For me, the Scottish Rally is the first Scottish Rally and the uh, stage is very difficult and very fast and uh, Justin Dale and Matt Anderson uh, drive very very fast and uh, I think he know very well the, the road but uh, I am very happy because uh, that is a good position. Going into the final stage, Mats Anderson and Claire Mole look comfortable in second. A very similar position to the one they occupied in the last stage of the last round. Then they failed to finish. Surely that could not happen twice. To left two plus of a crest. To right three, don't cut. Left six short. The team that have finished second in every stage were again delivering a drive that only Justin Dale could better. Left three plus, 100. This time, Anderson and Mole made sure of second. First time on the podium for Proton in Formula Rally. But everyone in this rally 
were support acts to the headline performance. And left two. And right three on a crest. 50. Right three. And crest 80. Left six Titans. And crest 80. Justin Dale and Andrew Bargery stormed into an early lead and never once looked threatened. 2nd in round 1, 2nd in round 2, they won in Wales and in Scotland, they won every single stage. Their 2nd consecutive rally win and the new championship leaders. So VW make it to the leaderboard. Quite a battle there between Samsung and Wedgbury. But this was Dale's day. Did it feel as good as his first win? Just as good, really, because it's proved that we can do it on the gravel as well. Um, OK, one of the, the sort of tarmac event like it was last time, it's really tight and twisty. And uh, now we've got into these really quick forests in Scotland that, no, we just proved that we can do it there as well. And at last for you, things have changed right at the top of the leaderboard. Have, yeah, it puts us on top of the leaderboard for the first time this year, which we're really chuffed with in the whole Peugeot team. Now. So Dale has converted a four-point deficit into a six-point advantage. But as Martin Rowe knows, things can change quickly in Formula Rally. Mago and Anderson in the wings, waiting to pounce. The car's been working very good through the week, this week, and... Uh, Handling is absolutely brilliant. What a contrast to the end of the last rally. Well, that was the first time we were going to have a podium finish and we needed the points. Um, so it was a bit of a pill to swallow, as you also. And they'd worked for it. It's been a, a tough old fight. I'd like to have had that first place on the podium, but maybe next time. Valuable manufacturers championship points there for Proton, but it's now Peugeot at the top. Ford losing their lead, but Mago's third place providing points. So that's it from Scotland, the end of round four, but more significantly, the celebrations behind a new championship leader for Formula Rally. See you in Kent. Ride fast, motors are taking a breather, so let's get domesticated next and grab the chance to be a chef for a night. The mission to take over a restaurant in Cheshire and make it work. Not easy.